Some languages have freakishly long words. Hawaiian driver's licenses have literally chopped off people's names. One ancient comedian spelled out this mystery meat dish. And German words can get so hefty that even when they lost their longest one in 2013, it hardly left a dent. So what's going on in these words? And just how long can a word get? A couple of years ago, I was living the life. Chained to a desk 10 hours a day, working weekends, taking lunch breaks to go snorkel with turtles in the reef. Oh, did I not mention I was chained to a desk in Hawaii? So I had a good swim, and I'm walking back. I must have zoned out on the scenery, singing with the birds or something, because somewhere I took a wrong turn. And now I am face to face with the street sign that never quits. Seriously, those letters went on forever. If you're a normal human in this situation, you know you're lost, you turn around and you walk the other way. But language nerds? We drop our ice cream and sit there mesmerized by phonemes. Oh <laughs> wait, you think a lone male goes wandering the streets licking an ice cream cone? That is creepy. No, we eat shave ice. The kicker though is if you pop open a Hawaiian dictionary, you won't find these forever words. In fact, most terms will look downright short. So where are the extra letters coming from? Hang out with me long enough and you'll hear about Pacific Island taboos. In Hawaii, the word is kapu. Oh, and there are some intriguing kapu stories, but that's for later. So keep kapu, but now go and grab the sounds ho'o, which my grammar book calls a causative. Smash that onto kapu and you get ho'o kapu. Maybe make something holy or cause to be taboo. But these affixes only buy us a few characters and they give me grammatical headaches. So no big wins here. Besides, most Hawaiian grammar is done with separate little words called particles. And if you thought dissecting word beasts was a pain, here's your chance to tame a bunch of little scurrying word insects. So beautiful though. But what's better than taking your base word and growing it by sticking on some appendages? Adding another base word. This is called compounding, and it'll learn you some serious extra letters. What you got? Got a brain? How about a lightning brain? Dung? Here's some pele dung. Triggerfish? Why not a blunt pig snout triggerfish? <laughs> Impressive word building, Hawaii. So then, is Hawaii home to the longest word ever? It is not. What about German or Greek from earlier? Same strategy, compound, compound, compound. No record breakers there either, unfortunately. The award goes to, drumroll, a master compounder extraordinaire, a 16th century writer, Tiru Malamba. She used compounding in her Sanskrit masterwork, in which there is an entire chapter devoted to basically just saying, so this guy passed through a part of Tamil Nadu. But she gushed over that region. I mean, she really laid it on thick. One, just one, of the litany of flowery Sanskrit words she used to describe the place contains dozens and dozens of compounds. And that is how a Sanskrit compound made the Guinness World Records for longest word. Are we having a moment here? Is that thought crossing your mind too? Like, theoretically, couldn't we just keep adding and adding hyphenated compounds infinitely? Well, you're right. Kind of unfair then, huh? If that's how we're playing this, fine. It's a hyphenated verbal arms race. The thing about words like these is they don't really get used. Truth is, even with compounding, Hawaiian and German and even Sanskrit aren't winning any average word length awards. Around the world, languages where people actually use long words in nearly every single sentence? Oh, they build words very differently. I should come back to that sometime. Stick around and subscribe for language.